Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Wednesday, hump day, the middle of the week here in the heart of the Arkansas Delta. How are you guys doing this morning? It is good to see you. It is a bit on the cool side outside. It is definitely on the cool side, but right now it appears dry, so that is a good thing. So, tell me, what all is going on with you folks? What's, uh, what has your week been like? Anything uh, going on that's kind of exciting that you want to share? Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, to this morning, I am camped out here in the pastor's office. Just uh, uh, wanted to stay in here this morning. Uh, if you get in and get on, please say hello. Let me know who all... Uh, is here, and I want to encourage you right now to go ahead and hit your share button, and uh, let's go ahead and get that out there. Good morning, Miss Jessie. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Miss Mary. Good morning, good morning, all you folks that are uh, beginning to uh, kind of pull into the pastor's office. I'm very, very excited to see you. I am doing my part and doing uh, that sharing thing this morning. There's Miss Denise. Good morning, good morning. Uh, just trying to uh, get over and get things shared and uh, just tell some folks about it. So uh, right now, this is your chance. You know you know the drill. Hit the share button. It's okay to do that. Uh, some of you may not be used to sharing, but what that does is that just puts our broadcast out on your Facebook page for your friends to see and for your family to see. It's super simple. You hit one button, and then you've got the option to put it on your news feed. That's what you want to do. When you click on share, you want to put it on your news feed. Um, anything else, there's no telling where it might end up, but either way, it's going to get shared, okay? Either way, it is going to get shared. I'm uh, going to put it over on my page, and uh, all of that good stuff. Let me see. Got to scroll back down. I'll put it, nope, not right there, boom, oh, Facebook, come on, come on, who all's here, folks, go ahead and say howdy to the preacher, let me know who all is coming on in, Miss Jesse, are you staying warm out there, uh, lady, are you, are you doing okay, how are you doing, I hadn't talked to you, so are you staying warm, do, uh, do you need anything, can I get you anything? Uh, if you do, you need to make sure that you let me know, okay? I want you to stay warm and stay safe, all right? Uh, I got to the uh, church campus this morning, and there was some white stuff up on the roof. White stuff up on the roof, and, and uh, uh, it wasn't cotton. wasn't cotton. There was definitely some, uh, some snow that uh, was up on the roof. Jesse says she's okay. All right, good, good, good. Good, good, good. Uh, so we did have some uh, uh, precipitation last night. I know when uh, Brother Larry was on Zoom last night, he said that he had had some sleet out at his place. And uh, when Gloria came in this morning, they uh, uh, they had, had some sleet out at their place too. So we definitely had some uh, uh, precipitation. So you may have gotten sleet. You may have gotten a little bit of snow. I know we're distinctly south of town, and we did not. But you could just tell there was something in the air. Um uh, I told Ms. Denise last night I had to take Scruffy out, and uh, when I come back in, I said, you know, there's not a whole lot out here, but uh, the way the clouds look, if we were in Ohio where we used to live, I would say we better batten down the hatches because it was about to get gnarly. Uh, that's that's how the clouds look. So it didn't, didn't surprise me to see any this morning. And this this morning on the church roof was not, uh, uh, it's not frost or, uh, or uh, anything like that. It, it's distinct snow. So uh, we definitely got a little bitty bit last night, but you know, like I said, it's just kind of hibernating in the corners of the the, uh, the church building. So nothing a good cup of coffee can't fix, right? Okay, so hey, if you missed uh, uh, Zoom last night, you want to go back over and catch that. Continuing to talk about the Christmas narrative. Brother Larry did a great job last night. We're still in Luke chapter 1. And uh, I want to encourage you to do it tonight, 6.30. I really want to uh, encourage you to uh, join me. We'll be having our Wednesday night live online service. We will not be on the campus. It's it's an online only. Uh, join me as we take uh, a look at a different part of the Christmas story. And uh, I'm very excited uh, about that. That'll be at 6.30. And uh, you want to set your clock, set your alarm. Um, make sure you've got your Bible and your journal already prepared, ready to go. And uh, we're going to be uh, in uh, Luke and Matthew tonight. So go ahead and do that. Tomorrow morning, uh, after our coffee chat time, Miss Pat will be back at 10, and uh, uh, she'll be uh, continuing in the book of Philippians, and this will be the last time that uh, Miss Pat uh, will be with us this year. Uh, she will not be back until after the first year. Of course, you know, next week is, next two weeks are holidays, and so I uh, just want to kind of give you that uh, kind of a heads up. And I'm thinking, um, Pam, I don't know if you're on right now, 
But uh, uh, if any of you ladies that uh, are, are in the, the ladies Bible study, I'm thinking that tomorrow is probably going to be your last day for the rest of the year. I don't know. I do, I do not know that. But uh, if you can kind of get uh, some information to me so we can be, begin to share that. I would sure enough appreciate it. We are, guys, can you imagine we're just over a week away from Christmas Day? It is so hard for me to believe that. I, it's just, you know, this has just been a, a, a tumultuous year, and uh, uh, it, it's gone by fast, but yet it seemed like it's taken five years to get through this, this one year. So it's kind of a mixed bag of tricks here. But we are uh, just over a week away from Christmas, a week from Friday will be Christmas Day. If you are planning on, on going somewhere, being out of town, being out of state, or if you have folks coming to your house, I just want to encourage you to do one thing. Have an incredible time with your family. Okay? I, I mean, have a great time with your family. That is the reason for our Christmas holidays. It, it's, uh, it's celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior with our families. I, uh, I I will tell you now, and I've seen some memes on the, on the social media of late that uh, uh, you know it's it's not about materialistic goods. I, I I don't ever 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 have to get a, another materialistic thing. Uh, I I don't need anything. Uh, yeah, you know I love coffee and I love coffee cups and stuff like that, and those are cool. But I don't need those. What I need is quality time with my family. That's that's it, and that's more important to me than anything. Um, I've I've learned a long time ago that my entire focus of life is based on three words: faith, my relationship with Jesus, faith, family, forever. And that has been my my heart's cry for a long time: faith, family, forever. And uh, I will stick to that. Faith, family, friends. There's our friends of the Allens uh, from Mariana. Good morning, guys and gals. Glad y'all are joining us. Uh, you guys a little cool down there. Uh, I'm sure you are. I just couldn't see, but you guys a little further south. Y'all about uh, yeah, y'all about a half hour from us, from where our, our, our church campus is. Uh, y'all about a half hour to us. Uh, hey, the, our memory verse for the week. If you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 15. If you love me. Keep my commandments. I really, really hope that you are uh, using these as a, a means of encouragement and as a means of scripture memorization. Um, uh, if you're not, guys, you really need to begin this. This needs to be something that you start and, and try to work on every, every day, okay? Scripture memorization. Uh, if you love me, keep my commandments. What a great way to start if you haven't been. If you love me, keep my commandments commandments. Okay. John 14, 15, but memorizing one now. Okay. Sorry about that guys. Um, then also this is the 16th day of December, which means you should be, uh, you should be reading, uh, Luke chapter 16 today as you, we are reading through Luke, uh, getting ready to get to next, uh, Thursday. Yeah. Next Thursday will be chapter 24. So, um, get get there, get in, get your Bible reading done, all of that good stuff, all that good stuff. Uh, okay, so hey, we are back over in First John chapter two today. Yeah, you, know, you know, the past two or three days, we have really uh, uh, took a, a deep dive into uh, this letter that John is writing, and today it only gets deeper. And so, go ahead and get your Bibles. Uh, we're in First John chapter two. So uh, uh, while you're getting over there, make sure your coffee is fresh. Make sure you're still kind of wrapped up in a blanket if you hadn't had a chance to get outside. Uh, if you do get outside, you sure want to throw a coat on. It's a bit, a bit on the cool side. Um, I don't wear coats often, but I've got uh, the heaviest coat I've got in Four City I had on this morning. So uh, you definitely do that. And Gloria and I have got the uh, heat on in our offices, making sure that we are we are toasty in here. So uh, it, is, it is a good day. All right, have you got your Bibles? Are you ready? We're in 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, and we're going to pick up at verse 18. And John is, uh, you remember who he's talking to, okay? He's sending this letter out to those churches in Asia Minor, all right? And he has already, you know, talked about their spiritual state. Yesterday, he talked about not loving the world or the things in the world, okay? Today, he's going to talk about the Antichrist, and he's going to talk about the spirit of Antichrist, 
Um, he's also going to talk about uh, Antichrist, plural. Okay, and you're going to see this in the text this morning. You're going to see uh, anti the word Antichrist with a capital A that that uh, signifies one individual, and we know that at uh, uh, at, at, at the end of time, we're going to have Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. Okay, we're going to have those three. Those are the three main characters uh, that stand on the forces of evil uh, during the during the last days. But then he's also going to use the word Antichrist with a little a, and it's a plural word, and it's talking about all of the false teachers, the false doctrines that they are the ones that are pushing and promoting and proclaiming the spirit of the anti. Christ. And so uh, he's warning the church uh, about the last days and what's going on and how they can be guarded. And I just, I need us to understand that this was not written to just that time period, okay? This is written to you and me today very, very clearly. All right, and we're going to talk about it as we go on. We're going to pick up uh, in verse 18. This is 1 John chapter 2. All right, here we go. Uh, John writes this, little children, it is the last hour. Now, let's understand something, okay? Yes, he wrote this about 2,000 years ago, but you and I are still living in the last hour. When Jesus Christ ascended to go to his Father, one of the last messages, okay, that we know that he was telling us was that he was going to come again, okay? And so we have been living in the last hour since that moment because God can come back at any moment. He could come back right now while we're on this live broadcast. He could snatch us out of here while this, this thing is still broadcasting live. Now, I don't know about you, but that'd be a pretty cool event, okay? But here's the thing, and in all seriousness, the rapture could take place anytime. We are in the last hour. And he's stressing this to the church, uh, the churches of Asia Minor. And we need to stress that today. It has already been inaugurated. It's here. It is, it is upon us. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that, the Antichrist, capital A, the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrist, plural, little a, have come by which we know that it is the last hour. And what John is trying to let them know is that during this last hour, this last days on earth, is that these false teachers, these false uh, preachers and prophets are everywhere doing the work of Satan, trying to get Christians to turn away from God. I mean, you remember what I, I shared yesterday morning that Satan really has has two agendas as to keep lost people lost and to keep Christians way off track. All right, well, this is exactly where he's at here. And when we talk about this, we have to be aware, as believers, we have to be aware, okay, that we are uh, we're in a war, okay, against the forces that are doing their best to just uh, oppose God. I mean, and so they are coming at us. I mean, if you are trying to do God's work and to live a godly life and to be a godly man or a godly woman, then Satan is going to oppose you every step of the way. And we have to understand that. And John's description of these antichrists are, are pretty simple. I'm going to share this with you, okay? His description of these antichrists include this, that they have a faulty understanding of Jesus Christ, that they have no relationship with God the Father, they're liars, they're deceivers, and these references to Antichrist, that plural, that little a, they refer primarily to these false teachers, like I was just sharing, who have left the church, they're no longer following God's way, and they're promoting a very heretical doctrine, okay? It's, it's, it's very much against scriptural teaching. And so we need to understand what, what John is saying here. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming even now, many Antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour. Verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. In other words, they left the church. They were just not 
Okay, they, they left being a part of that body because they were never part of us. That's what he said, they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest and none of them were with us. But you, again, talking to those churches, you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? John is really determined here, and he's very concerned about those that uh, are these false teachers that deny the complete deity of God. Okay, now when you talk about the deity, okay, you're talking about that Jesus Christ is God. He is God in the fullest sense of the word. You have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are all three God. They are three in one, the one in three. All right. And so what, what John is trying to do is to let them understand that even though that baby that was born in a manger, born to a virgin, yes, was fully human, but that this baby was also fully God. And, 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 and he's trying to, to drill that into the, to the church. And we need to understand that, that this was more than just a mythical story. When we, when we tell a Christmas story, it's more than a myth. This is reality. This was God come to earth. And he came, as I shared yesterday, he came to seek and to save that which is lost. Okay, let's keep going. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it. And that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Guys, this is powerful stuff, okay? John is emphasizing that it is the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of Satan. Okay, that denies the Christ, that denies the eternal Son of God, okay, that He did come in the flesh. And we see this even today, okay? We see this today. This is a very prevalent mindset in society. Right here in America, I'm not talking about overseas or third world countries, I'm talking about right here in America. That this spirit of Antichrist, these little Antichrists, these false teachers, these false prophets, they're everywhere. That's why it is critical that you know God's word and what God's word does say. Again, it comes right back to scripture memorization. The more you memorize scripture, the more you know the truth. The more you know the truth. And that's really where we are. But boy, John is just, uh, I mean, he's hes making it, it, it clear that those that are, are of this little antichrist that left are not a part of us. They're not us. They may look like us physically, but they are not like us in here. Okay. And so we really got to got to understand what we're doing. We got to be very mindful that not everyone as they seem. I'm sure we've all heard the statement, a wolf in sheep's clothing. They want to mingle in with the uh, uh, the herd, the pack. They want to look like the sheep. They're not. They are a wolf. And Satan is going to try to tear you down, to try to tear me down, to try to tear the church down any way he possibly can. So we have to be hyper guarded. Guys, I want you to have a tremendous Wednesday. Join me tonight at 630 as we take another look inside the Christmas narrative. That'll be at 630 right here on Facebook Live. In the meantime, if you do have to get out, please dress warm. Uh, stay safe. Be careful if you're driving. And uh, hey, tell somebody about Jesus, all right? We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.